Spanish explorer Juan Manuel de Ayala named that Isla de los Alcatraces, which translates into Island of the Pelicans, although the California brown pelican doesn't even live there anymore, ah! also known as Alcatraz. Of the 36 inmates who tried to escape, none were successful. It's also home to the very first lighthouse on the west coast, built in 1854. That'll shine some light on your day. You're gonna need it. After the devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake of 1906, San Francisco wanted to flex its muscles as a strong international city. So it put in a bid for the next World's Fair. It outbid both DC and New Orleans by raising $4 million in two hours to get the rights to the 1915 Panama Pacific International Exposition in celebration of the new completed Panama Canal. The only thing left after the event was the palace, which eventually became the Fine Arts Palace. It's pretty awesome. The Painted Ladies, also known as the Full House Houses. There's actually six of them, and they were built by a guy named Matthew Cavanaugh in 1892 through 1896. His house, the green one down there in the corner, is not technically a Painted Lady, it's the seventh house over there. It's a mansion, and it sold for $3.1 million after the former owner bought it for $65,000. That's a pretty good investment. The San Francisco City Hall it took 27 years to plan and construct, and then seven years later was completely destroyed by the 1906 7.8 magnitude earthquake. They then rebuilt the City Hall as this City Hall, which has the fifth largest dome in the world and is 19 feet taller than the US Capitol building. It's pretty awesome. Mir Woods, home to the Coast Redwood. A close relative of the giant sequoia, obviously. The tallest tree in this park is 252 feet tall. The widest tree in this park is 14 feet across with bark that is a foot thick. The oldest tree in this park is 1,200 years old, with the majority of mature trees between 500 and 800 years old. That makes me look like an infant. Also home to the Banana Slope. The Golden Gate Bridge. From 1937 to 1964, it had the longest main span of any suspension bridge in the world. Which is pretty awesome. And it's not red. It's actually international orange. Originally, the US Navy wanted it to be painted black with yellow stripes so ships wouldn't hit it. But it's actually the color of the sealant that lasted through the ages because it looked really cool against the white city and the blue sea. The San Francisco cable car is the last manually operated cable car system in the world and hasn't changed much since 1873 when Andrew Holliday instilled the system after watching a horse-drawn cart fall backwards down a muddy hill and thought, there's got to be a better way. The cable cars are pulled by a one and a quarter inch steel cable that is below the surface. The car has a grip that extends through the car and grabs the actual cable itself at 30 1,000 PSI. The cable then runs at 9.5 miles an hour, powered by a 510 electric horsepower motor in a powerhouse miles away. The brakes of the car are made of Douglas fir wood and have to be replaced every three days because really, the only thing stopping you from falling down the hill is that piece of wood and friction on the rail. Lombard Street, the crookedest street in the world, has eight hairpin turns and is 600 feet long if you're to stretch it out. Originally it had a 27% grade reduced down to 16 for safety. So you could safely take your pictures. We're here on top of the Twin Peaks, the highest geographical location in San Francisco at 925 feet. There's only one thing taller than that, and that is... The Sutro Tower at 1,811 feet above sea level, originally created to send TV and radio broadcasts to the San Francisco area. It is also earthquake proof. The top of the tower is 3.7 million pounds. The base of the tower is 15 million pounds, making the center of gravity actually below the ground. It can withstand up to an 8.0 magnitude earthquake on the Richter scale. That's pretty good, Shadow. 
We're here at the Japanese Tea Garden inside the Golden Gate Park. What was once a temporary fixture of the 1894 World's Fair then became a permanent fixture after Makoto Hajiwara convinced some local officials to turn a five-acre plot into this beautiful garden. He and his relatives are accredited with bringing the fortune cookie to the United States of America because there was a bakery inside the park that served the earliest remnants of the fortune cookie. Arigato Makoto. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. Click right here. If you're on a mobile device, click down there. Check out other cool videos and other Nikopedias. Click in this area. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Arigato. <laughs> All right. Is that a keeper?